Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. You're listening to Gnostic Lectures. This is Lecture 19, and the title is The Three Factors of the Revolution of the Consciousness. My host today, Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. How are you, Jim? Fine. Thank you, Rick. Thank you again for inviting me to be here. As I said it before, it is a real honor to be with you and also to have the opportunity of connecting with the entire human race, if it is possible. This is our mission. We are here to connect, to share a marvelous doctrine, which is the same doctrine of the Christ, which in different religions has different names. So the three factors of the revolution of consciousness is the title of our lecture today. You know, when we enter into the studies of Gnosis, Gnosticism, it's important to understand that Gnosticism today in the century 21st represents the doctrine of the synthesis. What is that? It means that we are ruled by hundreds and hundreds of cosmic laws in our galaxy. But this is a synthesis of all those cosmic laws, a synthesis to go straight to the point, because the problem is our humanity and many humanities in the universe have to learn to walk the path to perfection, to become one with the divinity. And this is exactly, you know, the purpose of life, learning to reach enlightenment, learning to become one with the Holy Spirit to become one with the cosmic Christ and to become one with the, fa the Father. Then we'll be able to return to the Absolute where we all came from. But after we have done a perfect job. So the doctrine of the synthesis or Gnosis teaches us that this is a revolutionary path to transform, as we said, into the perfect son of creation. Why a revolutionary? Many people don't like the word revolutionary because evolution, which is connected with it, evolution is not enough to reach perfection. Evolution and involution are two cosmic laws that were described in the past in other lecture. And those two cosmic laws are mechanical laws. We cannot incarnate God through evolution. This is the problem with many esoteric schools, many philosophical schools that pretend to know that we can all ascend and become better and better through evolution. We say no to them. What we need is a tremendous revolution of consciousness, which is a revolution of our soul. And the soul is immersed within our mind, within our emotions, within our instinct, within our sexual life, and within our physical bodies. Soul means consciousness. So if we want to build a degree of consciousness higher to the one we already have, we need to experience a tremendous revolution, a tremendous struggle against ourselves, and against wrongdoing. All religions teach that. All religions. As we said it before, all religions are good. They all teach the same principles. The problem is not uh, religious institutions have twisted their own conceptions about the divinity and about the doctrine of the Christ or the doctrine of awakening consciousness. The word religion means, from Latin, is means religare or reconnect, rejoined. So there are many phony religions, but the real religion teaches us how to reconnect with the divinity because we are disconnected. And all sacred books are written in a codified language that we mentioned that before, you know, alchemy and Kabbalah, and they were written in that codified language to protect against persecution. Because those sacred books were written in hard times. Historically, people were persecuted. Moses' followers were persecuted. The same Moses was persecuted. Buddha was persecuted. Krishna 
Lord Arjuna was persecuted. All founders of all religions were persecuted. So instead of writing the books using a psychological language, they decided to do it in a philosophical approach to reality. So alchemy and Kabbalah are substantiated within a philosophical perception of reality. Even both are scientific knowledge, high, very high scientific knowledge. So the doctrine of the synthesis that Gnosis teaches was also given to humanity in the past. Moses made the synthesis of these hundreds of cosmic laws through the Ten Commandments, which are more than ten. Jesus Christ synthesized even in a shortened manner the Ten Commandments. And we are going to explain that, you know, slowly, slowly to our listeners regarding uh, how those cosmic laws that are connected, are connecting the absolute, the homeland of the spirit, where we all came from, to the inferno, the infra dimensions of nature. So, and of course, there are hundreds of cosmic laws, but the doctrine of the synthesis is giving us the knowledge to be able to ascend and to be able to experience il enlightenment, illumination, or the incarnation of the divinity, to become one with God. Now, we need a tremendous psychological revolution. We have to change our way of thinking. If we analyze, you know, the collective behavior of humanity today, we realize that we have committed so many mistakes. Today, you know, people are marching on the streets of the world. You know, apparently hundreds of cities are being occupied by multitudes, people who are getting tired of their own systems. What's happening really? You know, something is bothering people. Something is really wrong. So, and people are perceiving instinctively, don't say consciously, but instinctively, because if you lost your job, you see, if your children are hungry, if you lost your home, you couldn't pay the mortgage. Of course, you fall into desperation. So instinctively, you need to survive. And you become angry with yourself, angry with the world, angry with society, angry with the system. Because the system didn't work enough to protect yourself. So instinctively, we know, we are learning that we are far away from building a perfect society. But if we experience, listen to this carefully, please. If we are able to experience a tremendous psychological revolution, a tremendous revolution of the soul to awaken our consciousness, there is a chance we will be able to create a more perfect society, to ascend, not only individually, but also collectively. But of course, the work is only always individual. Consciousness cannot be imposed from above. A government cannot impose a philosophy. No one, neither the corporate world, neither the military, you know, nor the unions, nobody has the right or the political parties to impose a philosophy or a way of life. That's an individual discovery, an individual development, an individual awakening. Remember that we said before, all planets are alive. Our planet Earth is a gigantic living organism. What about the solar system? Of course, the solar system is more alive, much more alive than our planet. It's part of a more gigantic living organism. What about the galaxies? Of course, they are more powerful forms of life, and we are all part of it. We said before that atomic particles are alive. Atomic particles manifest intelligence, cosmic intelligence. So are we aware that there is life in the sun? You know, we look at the sun and it looks like a, a fireball. And people say, oh, it's impossible to have life there. What if 
the habitants of the sun are people made of pure light, who breathe light. We breathe oxygen, but they breathe light. And this is what spiritual beings do. This is what we did when we lived in the Absolute, before we descended within our galaxy and transformed into what we are today. Today we are breathing oxygen because we are being made of atomic particles, molecules, and cells. And we need the oxygen to stay alive, to give life to our vehicles of the spirit, to matter, to give life to matter. So those habitants of the sun, they are all immortals, individuals, physically, physically. It's like they transcended the absolute. They've been living here in our galaxy and they have a mission from the sun. This is why the solar explosions from the sun that are very much connected with our life on Earth and any other planet of our solar system are part of their job, part of their mission to help us, to give us life and also to teach us in many ways how to transform ourselves and to ascend, you know, and they are, because they are there already and we all have the possibilities of becoming like them, which is resurrected masters, resurrected angelical beings, Christified individuals, people who did what Jesus Christ did after they reincarnated, they were able to ascend into a higher level of cosmic consciousness. They became light itself. The degree of illumination was complete, perfect, perfection within perfection. So they are perfect children of God, you know, compared to us. And so Jesus Christ, Moses, Buddha, Krishna, Mohammed, Quetzalcoatl in ancient Mexico, Wiracocha in ancient Peru, survival from Atlantis, Hermes Trimegistos in ancient Egypt, Zoroaster in Iraq, Iran, all founders of all religions, they all reached resurrection. They are all Christified superior individuals. They all incarnated cosmic consciousness. They all incarnated the cosmic Christ, which has different names in different religions. Even the 12 apostles of Jesus Christ, they all reached resurrection. Even Christian churches and the Catholic Church don't mention that, but we do it. What about Joan of Arc, Cagliostro and Saint Germain? We mentioned their names before, you know, all these three superior individuals, they also reached resurrection. They reached the perfect stage of incarnating the cosmic Christ, the perfect son, daughter of creation. Joan of Arc, you know, she was a woman when she was capable of reaching that stage of perfection with imperfection. So now, the doctrine of the synthesis connected with, you know, all religions, and in this specific case, with Gnosticism, with Gnosis, is bringing us the foundation of the hundreds and hundreds of cosmic laws to reach perfection. You see, Jesus Christ, if we study him, because in reality, Gnosticism recognizes that Jesus Christ, with all respect to any other religion, Jesus Christ, he is the chief of the White Lodge because he resurrected seven times compared to many other divine superior beings who have resurrected more than once. It means, it means that after the rich resurrection, they could have stayed in mortals physically for millions of years until the planet Earth died and became another moon. But they decided not to continue being resurrected. They decided to step down and to lose all their powers, to lose that stage of perfection within perfection. And they decided to descend. They descended 
you see, into a common mortal again, with more experience than average people, of course. But this is what they've done. Samael Anveor, the founder of Gnostic anthropology, he had done it three times. He had resurrected, and he stepped down, and he had done this perfect, magnificent, spiritual work, conscious work, through the revolution of the consciousness, three times. But Jesus Christ has done it, as we said, seven times. That makes of him the highest of the highest within this part of the universe. Within this part of the universe. Now, Jesus Christ brought the synthesis of all these cosmic laws, you know, and I will try to reproduce what he said. He did tell his disciples and all those people listening to him. He said, number one, deny yourself. What is that? Deny yourself. I, I'm going to be explaining it slowly, slowly, so we can communicate in a better manner. He added after, take your cross every day. And after, he said, and follow me. Deny yourself, take your cross, and follow me. Well, the teachings of Samael and Veor are exactly the same, but applying a more modern language, where we combine these mystical expressions of Jesus Christ, we combine them with pure science. Science of the Spirit. As we said that before, science will become progressively more and more religious, and religion will become more and more scientific. Because both are capable to connect and become one. The spirit and matter, listen to this, remember my words, please. The spirit and matter are designed to become one, to unite. And this is the mystery of incarnating the divinity in a complete manner. So Gnosticism, using the same expressions in a different manner, explains the doctrine of the synthesis, the three factors of revolution of consciousness, this other way. Deny yourself means myself. Who is myself? Myself is me, 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 me. And it means my ego. We had lectures about that in the past. Remember that. If you haven't remembered it, please pay attention and listen to that lecture called Essence, Ego, and Personality. Deny yourself means deny the me, 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 me. Stop being egotistic. Annihilate the ego. Deny means erase. Annihilate those demons that compose the ego, which is the Satan of all religions. Unconsciousness, subconsciousness, infraconsciousness. This is why our entire human race 99% or more are imprisoned within the egotistic psychology, which is an inferior psychology, is an animal psychology. We are half away between the animal kingdom and the real humans, and this is why we should consider ourselves intellectual animals. When we say we are humans, homo sapiens means humans with sapientia. Sapientia means wisdom. Where is our wisdom? Just look around. Look at the world today. We are all part of it. We are all actors, performers on the stage of life. And everybody is suffering. Show me someone who is not suffering. It would be very hard to find. You see, the point now is the ego is the cause of all human tragedies on earth. It's the cause of poverty. It's the cause of the seven deadly sins is the cause of, you know, greed, extreme greed, is the cause of lust that creates problems everywhere, destroys families. You know, all kinds of atrocities are committed because of lust. What about arrogance, anger, laziness, gluttony, envy? You see, all of those Greed, you know, all of those are part of, you know, the ego. Jesus Christ came to teach that. 
He came to teach the seven deadly sins for us to learn, to transform that, to annihilate the me, 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 which is based on fear, fear of life, fear of death, fear 24 hours a day, even if we're not conscious about it. We are so convinced that we are so clever, we applaud ourselves too much. This is why we stop learning. We are so convinced that we have no ego. Oh, we are so good, you know. I'm a good person. Everybody's a good person. But are we really good people? Or are we twisted? Aren't the kind of people who tell lies to ourselves? And of course, we lie to other people. We live totally a, a totally twisted lifestyle. And this is why Jesus Christ and all prophets and all founders of all religions came to teach us exactly the same kind of knowledge. Deny yourself, as Jesus Christ said. We call it annihilation of the ego, death of the ego, mystical death. There are three kinds of death, physical death, mystical death, which is death of the ego consciously here. And the Bible speaks about this death in inferno, the second death. When we, when we die and we have a heavy ego, Mother Nature will destroy the ego, all those legions of demons in inferno. will be purified there, but under tremendous, tremendous suffering. This is why the Bible describes the horrible suffering of going to inferno. Infradimensions of nature, the mineral kingdom immersed under the face of the earth, where the liquid fire will burn not only minerals, also will burn those demons that we all carry within. But it is much better to do it here on earth, here, learning to annihilate the ego. A Gnostic system, Gnostic anthropology teaches us how to do it through meditation techniques, by learning to observe ourselves, by learning to change to transform ourselves every day, every day, annihilating those seven deadly sins taught by Jesus Christ, and annihilating subconsciousness and transforming it into the opposite, which is consciousness. That's the way we create a soul. Because how can we have a soul when our ego has eaten, as a big monster, has eaten our consciousness? And that made us subconscious about reality. This is why there are so many mistakes on earth. Our lifestyle is twisted. We only care about ourselves. Me, 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 me. And of course, we cannot create a just lifestyle, a just society. Because there is no love. We talk about love, we fall in love with love. But what do we know about real love? Love is consciousness. Love is wisdom. It's very important to remember that. So, deny yourself taught by Jesus Christ. We call it annihilation of the ego, according to the Buddhist religion. And also, we call it death of the ego. Mystical death. We have to make a tremendous effort to accept our mistakes, to correct our vices, our defects, our errors, our weaknesses, we have to be extremely conscious, extremely courageous, extremely brave to accept our mistakes and then to be ready to annihilate them. Because if we don't accept our wrongdoings, how are we going to correct them? It's impossible. Number two, Jesus Christ said, take your cross every day. Christian churches and the Catholic Church speak too much about Jesus Christ carrying the cross, suffering, you know, while he was walking before he was crucified. Well, there is a percentage of truth when they say, you know, we are here to suffer and we are carrying our cross. But they don't teach you that the cause of suffering is the ego. If we don't practice the first factor of the revolution of consciousness, which is denying ourselves, annihilation of the ego, death of the ego, of course we are going to suffer. So we will carry 
a painful cross, but they don't understand really the real meaning of the cross. The cross is alchemy itself, the alchemy of the universe, where all elements of nature cross to create a third force. Hydrogen and oxygen cross to create water. Let's say hydrogen is a male, a man, oxygen is a woman, a female, they cross to have a baby, and the baby is water. We call it water, okay? So, take the cross means exactly that, the foundation of society. We need a family, we need a male and a female, we need a man and a woman. And through love, remember my words, through real love, there will be guarantee for the family to grow and develop in the right manner, you know, to get closer to the divinity. Through the power of love, a man and a woman who love each other, who learn even to adore each other. Listen to my words. Do you adore your wife? Do you adore your husband? Are you sure? Can we do that? Can we learn to adore each other? When after three years, people walk away from each other. They say, yeah, I'm fed up with you, you know, I don't like you anymore. I need another sexual partner in my life, you know. Even there are books and movies who promote those ideas, you know. Because in reality, we are talking about sex. But what do we know about sex? We believe we do, but we don't. There are many specialists today within the medical profession who call themselves sexologists. Are you sure you are a true sexologist? Do you really know about true sexuality? Gnosticism teaches us. And, you know, and the foundation is in the Bible also. All sacred books speak about that. The book of Leviticus. Please read it, okay? Open it up. Book of Leviticus. Between number 15 and number 18. Read it. Meditate about that. Apply it into your own life. And you will understand better what I'm trying to say. What we are trying to say. There it teaches about real sex. Because there is a human sex that will connect us with the divinity, but there is also an animal sex. And all propaganda, pornography, is guiding humanity into animal sex. And this is the cause of the ego, because the animal sex is pure egotistic contact, is pure egotistic behavior. Sex without love. How can we make love without love, you know? Don't call it making love, then. It has a lot of names, okay? You know those names. I don't need to repeat them. So making love with love is the key point. Take your cross every day. And this is why, listen to this carefully. Moses, in the Ten Commandments, the commandment number six, he speaks about sexuality, where he says, no fornication. I'm not going to describe it with my own words, but I want you to read Leviticus 15 to 18. There is very well explained. Okay? Read it and try to understand it and try to apply it into your own life. And Moses also said the ninth commandment is adultery when you have more than a sexual partner. It's also there in Leviticus 15 to 18. I'm going to explain with my own words. I'm going to try to clarify the meaning of adultery. Do you know that we, you and your wife or your husband have sex? You exchange atomic particles which carry the karma and dharma, which is good luck and bad luck that we carry from past lives and also the accumulation of our mistakes in this lifetime and also the good thing that we've done in this lifetime and in past lives. Karma, dharma, good luck, bad luck. So a couple who are in love, when they exchange good luck, well, it will increase their love for each other, their happiness as a couple, as a perfect couple. But what about if they exchange bad luck? If they really love each other, they will be able to stay together. And... As a couple, listen to this, they must learn to work together in the annihilation of the ego, the annihilation of all those demons that we all carry within, that have eaten our soul, our mind, our emotions, our sexual life. You see? So this is extremely important. So, but the problem is 
when a man or a woman who have a relationship already, they are looking for additional sexual partners. You know, if you sleep with a prostitute, male or female, prostitutes sleep with everyone, sometimes with criminal individuals. A criminal individual normally has a, a lot of bad luck because criminals fight for territories. They fight, you know, for money. They kill each other and they end being killed sooner or later. They live in a stage of violence, underground, you know, societies, etc., etc., always escaping, always doing wrong things. And when a prostitute sleeps with one of them, all the evil of that individual will be transferred to the prostitute. And later the prostitute will have sex with a husband or a wife who is unfaithful to a relationship. And suddenly the poor wife is walking on the streets of the world and somebody shooting at someone else on the other side of the street. That poor wife will be caught in the middle of the gunfire and nobody can explain why that kind of bad luck. Because the husband transferred to her the bad luck that came from a prostitute and that came before from a criminal individual that has that had sex with that prostitute. Or maybe the wife had a sexual partner that was connected also with evil individuals. You see, the law of cause and effect. We say, and justice? No. It's cause me justice. We don't like it? Yes, we don't, because we, we applaud our mistakes too much. So this is, these are part of the mysteries of sex. Show me a psychiatrist, a sexologist who can explain this better. Bring it here. Let's argue it, argue it without any problem, publicly. Let's talk clearly. Now, if you're a sexologist or a psychiatrist, expert in sex, sexuality, do you know the difference between animal sex and real human sex? Do you? Are you familiar with you see, Sahaja Maithuna, that is being taught through, you know, ancient yoga's teachings. Yoga is a very ancient knowledge coming from ancient India and before from ancient China, ancient Tibet. You see, Sahaja Maithuna, that's the way they call it, is also called Kundalini Yoga. Do you know anything about that, Mr. Sexologist? Are you sure you know about that? Are you familiar with sexual... Alchemy. Do you know that all the alchemists persecuted by the Inquisition, they knew about this. When you practice alchemy, when you're an alchemist, your sexual life is connected with it. Because the entire universe is sexual, male and female. We don't agree with that? Do we get scandalized? Come on, you know. You see a lot of porno movies through the internet and you never get scandalized. Ignoring that this is animal sex. What about divine sex? You know, Samael Onveor, the founder of Gnostic Anthropology, has said a very interesting sentence regarding sex. He says, sexuality is a stairway to heaven or a stairway to hell. A stairway to paradise or a stairway to inferno. Did you know that before? Now we are sharing that knowledge with you. In the future, we'll be able to tell you more. And also, if you read the books written by Samael Onveor and find gnostictichings.org and there through that website, you will be able to buy many, many books written by the founder of Gnostic Anthropology, Samael Onveor. So this is the meaning of the cross. We are all crossed. Male and female cross to create a family. The entire human race is here because of sex. Are we aware of that? The problem is sex has been demonized and it is okay to demonize it when it is animal sex. But when it is real human sex based on real love, when a couple learn to adore each other, when there is one who is capable of loving more and more and more every day. And the other one is learning to love better and better and better every day.
can we really learn to develop this kind of relationship between a man and a woman? Do you, do you believe so? The answer is, it is possible. It's up to us. It's up to us. This is the mystery of the cross. The problem is that when the Inquisition took away the Gnostic Gospels, which are Gospels written by disciples of Jesus Christ, which are not in the Bible, they are not in the Bible, because they were too clear about this, about fornication and about adultery, too clear, very specific. And even Jesus Christ says, you know, you can even read it in the Bible. He says, you are children of the devil. You are not children of God because you are a child of fornication. So can we correct that? Of course. Walk away from the devil. Walk away from Satan. Walk away from the ego. Instead of continue practicing animal sex, fornication, and adultery, learn to practice real divine human sex to ascend to heaven. Because the door is there. But nobody can trespass that door if we are doing the wrong things. This is the real meaning of taking your cross. We call it in Gnosticism to be born again. You know, Jesus Christ says that to Nicodemus, remember? He speaks to Nicodemus, he says, you have to be born again. And Nicodemus says, how am I going to be born again if I'm, I'm already here? And Jesus Christ repeats, I'm telling you that you have to be born again through human sexuality and to walk away from animal sexuality. What about the third factor of the revolution of consciousness? Follow me, Jesus Christ says. We call it agnosticism. We call it do what I do. What did he do? He was teaching the doctrine of the Christ, of the cosmic Christ, because Jesus incarnated the cosmic Christ, as, as I said it, as we said, seven times that made him the highest of the highest within this part of the universe. So, follow me means that. Share with humanity the body of doctrine. Teach humanity not only the three factors of the evolution of the consciousness. Teach them all cosmic laws that we can have access to. We gave already you a few cosmic laws. The law of evolution, the law of involution, the law of karma, law of dharma. Remember, it's there. The law of reincarnation and the law of return and the law of reoccurrence. They are cosmic laws. They are part of the hundreds and hundreds of different cosmic laws. But this is the synthesis. We go straight to the point. Why to go in circles when we can get lost? When we enter into the labyrinth of the mind, we all get lost. And this is the tragedy of our humanity today. We are all in prison within the labyrinth of the mind. And the mind of Taurus, which is the same ego, the Satan of all religions, has all of us hypnotized. Are we aware of that? That we walk like zombies on the streets of the world, always dreaming and experiencing nightmares and never awakening our consciousness. It's very important to learn to live here and now, to stop living in the past or to live in the future. We have to stop dreaming and we are teaching the opposite of what most of people believe. People say, oh, fulfill your dreams. Come on, don't dream. Just walk toward the light without dreaming. Do it. Don't dream. Do it. Action. Good intentions are not enough, you see? So, and to end this lecture, it's very important also to understand another element, extremely important. This path of searching for perfection. As we said it before, within the, the ladder of Jacob, Jacob's ladder, to ascend into the light. We mentioned before that to reach masterhood, we have to practice the three factors of revolution of consciousness. We have to annihilate the ego. We have to take the cross every day or practicing human sex, divine sex, based on pure love, learning to love each other, making love with love, 
the one who loves more and more and more and the one who loves better and better and better. So, and also to teach this knowledge to the entire human race, to share it. It doesn't matter if people accuse you of being wrong, being crazy, being irreal, being idolless, it doesn't really matter. Because if we have lived a twisted lifestyle for centuries, it's really very hard to be able to change. Remember, we've been here already many, many times, and we accumulated a lot, a lot of wrongdoing, a lot of karma, and also we don't recognize our mistakes. As we said, we applaud ourselves too much. We are convinced that we are good guys when we are not. We don't even accept that we have ego. You see, so all those elements are extremely important. So if people don't believe you, it doesn't really matter. This is part of our test to ascend into higher levels of consciousness, awakening our consciousness. The three factors of revolution of our soul, revolution of our consciousness. So Jesus Christ came to teach how to ascend into the level of resurrection. He came to teach that, which is higher, higher than what we already said. You know, deny yourself, take your cross, follow me. I would say you can ascend into heaven, you know, and they call it the spiral path. And after you, let's say, you do a good job, you incarnate your soul consciousness. It means we have a divine soul we explain that in another lecture. We have a divine soul and we have a human soul. When your human soul annihilates the ego in a certain percentage, the human soul will be able to unify with the divine soul. The divine soul is made of pure light. The human soul is made of electrons. So if we annihilate a percentage of the ego and we practice the three factors of revolution of our consciousness, we will be able to ascend into a level of perfection that we can call it the Buddha, a living Buddha, like the Dalai Lama. And eventually you will go to heaven and you will have to reincarnate. You will be part of the law of reincarnation now. You won't be part of the law of return. You will become a conscious individual on the other side. You will live in heaven in touch with superior beings and you will continue learning more and more and more about cosmic law. And from time to time, you will have to reincarnate to help humanity. Today, they call it nirvana or paradise or heaven or Eden. Well, nirvana is today very active. Most of masters are already reincarnated. They have to do it because this is the end of a cycle. They are helping humanity to ascend because we are in a big trouble. It's not only that political systems have become so corrupt that people are suffering all over the world. And also Mother Nature is very active because Mother Nature is recycling our planet Earth. So Mother Nature is teaching us to recycle. It means changing drastically, regenerating ourselves because we enter into a stage of degeneration. If we are degenerate, are we going to just sit down and do nothing? Or are we going to do something to improve ourselves, to come back from illness into health, to heal ourselves from the ego, to annihilate the ego, and to transform ourselves? So then, if we can do a good job and we can transform into masters of the White Lodge, we will go to heaven and we'll be able to come back many, many times, as many times as needed, to continue ascending learning more and more and more, but also helping humanity, practicing the three factors again. But now, Jesus Christ didn't come to teach the spiral path. He came to teach the direct path to the absolute. Because the purpose is coming back to the absolute. Are we going to come back the same way that we descended? A baby spirit? Or are we going to come back a child? Or even a teenager? Okay? regarding our degree of spirituality, our degree of enlightenment, our degree of perfection. So Jesus Christ came to teach the direct path, and the direct path consists, listen to this carefully, when you ascend, when you are recognized by superior beings 
as a master of the White Lodge, because you have created already a soul consciousness. It means your two souls, the divine soul and the human soul, became one. This is the mystery of the twin souls. So a living Buddha has incarnated the soul, the divine soul of the divinity, became one with the human soul that the ego had possessed for longer periods of time. So it means that we have defeated the devil, we have defeated Satan in a tremendous percentage. But those who walk the direct path to the Absolute, after they, they've been told, you can live in heaven for longer periods of time until you, you will be told to reincarnate. These masters will say, no, no, I don't want to go to heaven. Why not? Because I want to ascend into a higher level. And the main reason is that humanity is suffering so much here. Why should I go to paradise to enjoy myself, to live in a state of grace, happiness, joy, escaping from human pain here on earth? So there are very few masters who have the capability to get there to that stage of perfection. Well, Jesus Christ came to teach that. And Samaila Onveor, the founder of Gnostic Anthropology, came to teach exactly that. This is why, as we said, Jesus Christ, after he reached resurrection, he descended to reach more perfection, more knowledge, more wisdom, more consciousness. We've been told that Jesus Christ has the power to live not only in this galaxy, but many, many galaxies. You know, groups of galaxies are called infinites. Albert Einstein used that term. An infinite is a group of galaxies organized. Jesus Christ has the power to rule, listen to this, to rule many, many galaxies and many infinites because he has the knowledge to comprehend, to understand every habitant every cosmic law of all those different habitants of every planet of the galaxy. Only our galaxy has millions of planets. What about groups of galaxies? Can you, we imagine his degree of perfection? And, and Samael Veor has done the same work of perfection within perfection three times. So he had the right to speak about this because he has done this magnificent work of practicing the three factors of revolution of the soul consciousness many, many times to ascend higher and higher and higher. This is why Jesus Christ not only incarnated the cosmic Christ, he also incarnated his Father. His Father lives in the Absolute. So Jesus Christ can enter into the Absolute, in and out, without any problem. The Absolute, as we said, is higher than all galaxies, all infinites, is the homeland of the Spirit. Jesus Christ is a habitant of the Absolute. Now, so it's important that we understand that. Now, Gnostic teachings, Gnostic anthropology connected with Gnostic cosmology is teaching all of, all of this because this is the doctrine of the synthesis. Instead of going in circles around and getting lost, within the labyrinth of the mind, where theories after theories are imprisoned within our consciousness. And of course, we are lost. We become subconscious, unconscious, infraconscious, and we become perverse without even knowing it. So this is what we respectfully are trying to share with the entire human race. We don't feel better than anybody else. We are also students of life. We are also students of Gnostic anthropology and Gnostic cosmology, Gnostic sexology, Gnostic psychology, Gnostic philosophy. We are just students. But personally, I don't like to be an intellectual animal anymore. I would love to transform into a true human. And after, if it is possible, there is a chance for all of us to become superhumans. So this is not a dream, this is not an illusion. Respectfully, I give you thanks for listening to our lecture. Thank you very much.
Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. You've been listening to Gnostic Lectures. This was lecture number 19, The Three Factors of the Revolution of the Consciousness. The website, rickyradio.com. Send your email to gnosticradio at gmail.com. Thank you very much. <laughs>